This is Mario with MIA Microflight, and this is my MIA robotic table soccer player. I designed this with two servos. The servos have been modified. The potentiometer inside each of the servos has been replaced with two resistors of equal value, totaling the full value of the uh, potentiometer. And that is to obtain full left and right rotation on the servo um, wheel. I can go back forward, left and right using a um, transmitter that's been set to mix, Elevon mix. Very simple setup. I am using uh, magnets. As you can see here, the wheels have provisions to uh, house uh, three of these uh, six by four millimeter magnets. These are neodymium magnets, very powerful little magnets. There's one on the kicker leg. And as the wheel comes um, towards it, it's able to actuate with the kick action. Let's see if I can uh, mimic that here. There we go. And as it goes around, it drops by its own weight. So, a uh, very simple setup. It's very effective as the uh, robot travels across the soccer table it's also kicking so you can actually drag the ball with the uh, with the player if you're nice and uh, um, careful and you keep the robot nice and straight this is the 3d printed uh, ball this was printed also at uh, very fine um, very fine uh, layers so it was uh, so it is very smooth and this is another ball that is uh, faceted and this is just to allow the ball to hold uh, its uh, location after a kick so it doesn't continuously roll like the uh, smooth ball so two types of balls uh, for two types of uh, uh, action you can see the the legs of the robot have also these uh, curve uh, uh, sections here and that is to drag the ball as it's coming or as it's uh, pushing the ball forward. It can also go backward. It can also uh, hit the ball with the tail. You can hit it with the tail sideways. If it gets stuck in a corner, you can you just rotate it because it rotates left and right. It goes backwards as well. You can also kick backwards, kick forward. But the actual kicking action is done by these uh, by these legs here, these uh, magnetic legs. And just to keep it very simple, so I'm actually killing two birds with one stone, so to speak. As uh, as this moves forward, I'm also actuating the the leg. Uh, if you have seen uh, robotic uh, soccer players um, done in competitions, you know they're much more complex, of course much more larger because uh, people that design them, they design them with multiple uh, motors. I've seen some that are designed with four motors, two, uh, two horizontal to 90 degrees uh, to affect um, sideways uh, side uh, 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 travel as well as back and forth and rotation. So it's that to me was a little too complex and it was getting just a way beyond uh, the scope of uh, the robotic pilot, um, figure that I wanted to design so I wanted to keep it very simple and so this is what I came up with. This is my third iteration because I typically uh, do all my designs. They typically take uh, three, uh, two prototypes and then the final one, the third one is uh, basically the uh, end uh, result, uh, the final one. Um, minor, minor cosmetic uh, uh, enhancements. I've done some enhancements to the, to the head, so it has provisions for two LEDs here, so it's it got two perforations here, two holes that are also perforated at the bottom of the head. The head can come off, and it's done just for simplicity, for, to ease, uh, for ease of uh, printing, so that it prints nice and, uh, nice and clean. And that's something that uh, one has to do when trying to figure out how uh, mechanical parts uh, need to be printed. Uh, if some parts print uh, better one way, than other ways. And so the head is just attached with this flex uh, tubing that I consistently use with all my other products. So the head just simply fits on top of that. With a little bit of pressure, if I can get it in with one hand, there we go. And it's able to, you know, shake a little bit. This is a, a robotic uh, pilot, or not a robotic pilot, <laughs> robotic figure uh, travels across the uh, plane table. Uh, this can be uh, operated on a flat table. You can also operate it on ground, uh, wooden surfaces. I mean, as long as the surface is smooth, you can operate this uh, pretty much anywhere. 
Uh, you can also build a, a separate table, just building uh, borders, you know, just uh, two inch uh, sticks, two, uh, two by twos maybe, or two one by twos. Uh, you can also build a border with um, elastic um, bands. Uh, there's so many ways to, to do the uh, the field. But I just uh, did this for my sacred table that I showed in some other video, the one that I've been building uh, with a nice surface, a nice uh, fabric uh, cover surface that uses, uh, you know, it's a foosball table, so it uses the, the manual uh, the players on the stick type. So I started doing that, and midway uh, in that construction, I decided, well, you know, I, I don't like the sticks in, uh, in, in the way, you know, like foosball tables have, you know, they have the sticks. I mean, they, they, they're a lot of fun, but, you know, the sticks, I wanted to get rid of that and see if I can uh, introduce the players on the, directly on the table without um, too much uh, hassle and too much complexity. And so I was thinking of doing it magnetically, like some people have done, you know, with the stick on the bottom with a magnet, and they have these plates on top of the, the, the surface that also have a magnet, and you just drag the, the stick underneath with a magnet, and then it carries the plate on top with a magnet, that's how they hit the ball, but that was a little too, uh, just too, too cheesy for uh, my taste, and I wanted uh, something a little more, uh, not too complex, but something a little more, uh, uh, it's a little more challenging and more more fun, and I think this uh, this little guy does the, the trick. Um, I will show you what this looks like in here. Yeah. Okay, so that's my CAD model. You can see here all the components. As I was saying, you know, this has the uh, this has the LED uh, lights for eyes right there. You can see the back also has this um, tray here that has uh, provisions for the receiver and the battery that sits in the back and it also creates a little bit of weight towards the back because you don't want this thing to uh, fall forward. You know, you want to have a, a little weight, weight at the back. And the way this is uh, designed, it, uh, it has that normally with just the two servos, but it uh, has a little more weight, you know, with the battery and the receiver. So that's the reason for that little part there, that little caddy or shelf or little bracket. So we can see that here. You know, right now this is kind of sitting kind of loose here with a rubber band. But I plan on cleaning that up a little bit more because the wires are a little too long. So I'm going to shorten them up and then uh, make it a little more uh, tidy connection to the receiver. The receiver is right underneath the battery. It's just a small receiver. Uh, you can use pretty much any, any small receivers. Uh, you don't need to, uh, you don't even need BEC, battery eliminator circuitry or an ESC to power the receiver. There are parts. I've seen uh, robotic uh, soccer players done uh, much larger, much more bulkier and with more components than I think it's really needed. Uh, the simplicity of this particular robotic uh, 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 player is what makes this um, uh, very easy to assemble and uh, very easy to operate. You can see that the legs here have provisions for magnets. These are uh, neodymium magnets that have been inserted into the legs right here. There's one where I'm pointing this, uh, where I'm pointing the arrow to. That's a magnet there, and there's a magnet here. And these slots right here on the wheels um, are slotted to accept uh, four of these magnets. These are four millimeter in height by six millimeter in diameter neodymium magnets. This um, rectangle here on the wheel takes uh, three of them so it is able to kick um, uh, have a really good kick action on each of the legs both legs can operate at the same time or depending where left and right uh, is uh, actuated they can also independ uh, uh, or operate independently the servos connect to a receiver a small uh, receiver and uh, it is operated direct via one cell lipo battery I'm running a uh, high voltage uh, battery on these uh, robots, 500 milliamp hour, and that seems to provide a good uh, uh, running this continuously. I would say that uh, you can play for about uh, 30 minutes easy before the battery runs down. I'm in the process of building a second one so that I can have uh, uh, some kind of a uh, interaction with another player. So it's uh, I'm doing this video on printing the parts. It's a complete uh, set of parts. These are all 3D printed parts. If you're interested in this project, let me know. Um, and I'll see, um, I'll see if I can release the uh, 3D printed parts you know, to this uh, 
particular uh, robotic uh, soccer player. Um, what else can I say? The um, you, you can see the body. This is uh, just a piece that acts as a uh, spreader or a, a uh, distance um, uh, block, but it's able to pivot forward and, and backward under pressure of the the screws here. Depending how tight these screws are, you know, it's able to hold it in place. But it also holds the uh, legs uh, brackets or the the uh, the um, the brackets that are uh, holding the the pivots for the legs in that separation so that it's able to uh, operate uh, nice and smooth. You can see the servos at the back, back or at the bottom. You know, they're just your typical MG90S uh, servos. These are some cheapy servos that I had. Uh, they work uh, pretty good. The rear wheels are wheels that I did for a uh, one cell uh, RC airplane, an ultralight. So I had some spare ones and I decided to use, uh, use it on this uh, little project here. They worked out very nice. You know, you can see the foam, uh, insert, the foam uh, tire. You know, I make all these wheels from scratch. You know, that's a 3D printed part and then this is just a foam uh, ring that I also make that goes on top of the wheel. Uh, similar to these uh, wheels here, in this case I used uh, a bicycle uh, tube, inner tube. I cut some uh, sections there and I slipped it over these uh, wheels, but uh, they would probably work better with uh, some foam uh, tires, very, very thin foam tires, so uh, that's something that I'll do in the uh, future. Uh, check out those videos uh, of this little guy uh, in action, uh, So, and stay tuned for more. Mario with my Market Flight, once again, thanks for watching.